Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And today's video is part of a special hop. It is hosted by Lynn LV Handcrafted here on YouTube, and we are going to be working with the brand new club kits from Spellbinders. I hope you'll stick around to see which ones I'll be using, what I'm going to make, and find out how you can hop along to all of the other creators. Each month, Spellbinders puts out some fun new club kits, and they send me a few to work with. Well, Lynn of LV Handcrafted decided that some of us might want to get together each month and have a fun little hop to feature the new kits. So today, I will be using the new Clear Stampin' Die of the Month, which is called Fall Thoughtfulness, and the Large Die of the Month, Boolicious Fall Cupcake. Now, once you're done watching my video, make sure to check out everyone else's. The next person on the hop is listed in the description box below, as well as a list of all of the videos that you can check out today. I know that with all of my crafty friends who are joining, that you're going to be totally inspired. And I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and give them some love. When I saw the new Fall Thoughtfulness stamp set, I knew that I wanted to feature this little leaf and flower bouquet here. And because I want to create a nice bright background that will make my uncolored image pop, I wanted to make my own stencil. So to do that, I'm going to be bringing in two leaves and the pumpkin from this cupcake stamp set. This is just to show you how you don't always have to just build what the kit is intended for. As I get into the process, I will tell you more about the products and tools I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'll be making my own stencil, and to do this off camera, I pre-cut a piece of heavyweight vellum to 6x6. Six six. Now you can definitely use a heavyweight cardstock if you don't have vellum. I just thought that the ink might not stick as much to this as it would to cardstock. I'm going to start by grabbing those three small dies that I want to use, and I'm going to place them in kind of a triangle shape in that upper left hand corner. When I have them arranged how I want them, I use a piece of scotch removable tape to hold the dies together, and then I'm going to use one more piece to the hold the dies where I want to make that first cut. Then I take these over to my Big Shot and cut that out. Now what I'm going to do is decide where I want my next one to be die cut. You could move it to the right, but I do like to go kind of in an angle to the opposite corner at the bottom. I keep moving the dies and cutting at that angle, and when I get to that bottom right hand corner, I do want the dies to hang off. But because they were hanging off both sides, and my platform is only 6 inches wide, I did have to take the dies apart to make those cuts. Now to get those back in the same place so I can continue to cut, all I had to do was put them face down in the areas that I had already cut out. Then again, I'm going to tape them together with the scotch removable tape and then move them for the next cutting. Now this is one where you might have to play around a little bit with where you want to place it, what the angle you want to change it to. But once you have that, you're just going to keep cutting until you have the whole thing cut. You will want to make sure when you bring your quote unquote stencil to your card base that it is going to fill the entire piece. Even though we will cut some off later, we do want it to bleed off the edges for now. Because there are some delicate parts that might come up when I'm doing my blending, I did take this outside and put some pixie spray on the back, and while I waited for that to get dry and tacky, I moved on to the ink blending. I will be using candy corn and pineapple inks from Tailored Expressions for my blending. And to stencil onto, I pre-cut a piece of off-white cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half. This cardstock is between a white and an ivory, and I think it's a really good kind of neutral for fall cards. 
To hold my piece of cardstock in place while I do the blending, I did add a little ATG to the back and detacked it with my fingers. I'm going to be blending in from the ends. One side will be orange, one side will be yellow. And you'll see I originally had it in a portrait orientation, but I do find for myself it's easier if I stencil from right to left. So I turned that landscape and I brought in the pineapple ink and started blending. There will be a lighter area in the middle where the two colors just barely meet and I try to go in counterclockwise and clockwise motions from the edge in until I kind of run out of ink. And then once I've got a good coverage on that, I do come back in and just focus right on the edge with the ink. Once I was done with the yellow, I turned my cardstock around and did the same thing with the orange ink. If you're enjoying today's video and you're not yet a subscriber of my channel, First of all, I would like to say welcome, and secondly, I would love to invite you to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Once the first layer of ink was down, it was time to bring in my homemade stencil. I put that in place using that slight tack on the back from the spray, and then just to hold it in place a little bit better because some of those edges wanted to come up, I brought in a couple pieces of blue painter's tape and added those to the ends. Then using basically the same technique as before, I blended in from the ends with the same colored inks. And because I'm adding more ink on top of those specific areas, when I pull it up later and do the reveal, you'll be able to lightly see those leaves in the background. While I finished that ink blending, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today I would like to know, are there any products or tools that you like to DIY for yourself? For instance, I made my own stencil here. I also like to make my own masking templates using masking paper and dies. Let me know your answer in that comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. I can't wait to see those responses. And now it's time to stamp our focal point and our sentiment. For this, I'm using Tailored Expressions Chocolate Truffle Ink, and I'm stamping onto some of that same off-white cardstock that I ink blended onto. Now for this, I'm not going to end up coloring the image. I want the background to be the part that is colorful. So I did go with a chocolate brown ink, and later you'll see that that matches my card base. Once I have my stamps in place, I ink them up and I use my presser tool to get a nice crisp impression. Since these stamps are brand new, I did ink it up and stamp it twice. Now I'm going to use those coordinating dies and die cut those off camera. I did a little more work while I was off camera and that was cutting down the stencil piece and making an orange mat for it and I prepared my chocolate card base. Since this is such a dark base, I wanted a piece to go on the inside so my personal message was easy to see. So I cut down another piece of that off-white cardstock and I added the same stamped image from the front in the lower left-hand corner. Since all of the pieces were ready, I assembled my card, and to do this, most things went just flat down with ATG to keep it nice and thin, but I did want to pop up the image, so I brought in this roll of foam tape, and this is actually from Tailored Expressions. I know it looks very similar to my big blue rolls of foam tape, but this is actually a little wider, but it's not quite as thick, so it offers a little lift, but not as much as my normal foam tape. I just like the added dimension this gives, so I covered the back of the bouquet with some of that, pulled the release paper, and got it put in place. 
Since the sentiment is so skinny, I didn't want to try to get foam tape on the back, so I used my Barely Arts glue to put some liquid, and with this being liquid, it gave me a little wiggle room. To help me get it straight across, I didn't necessarily use the ruler for centering. I brought in my T ruler and put that in place. Now, this was a point I realized I probably put it down a little too low. There was more space between the bouquet and the sentiment than I wanted but I'm gonna fix that while I add the sparkle. I put three gems between the focal point and the sentiment just to kind of make some of that space look a little bit less. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this quick and easy fall card by making my own stencil using the new stamp and die of the month and large die of the month from Spellbinders. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit the next video on the hop by clicking on that link in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.